This is a special news Dota bulletin. Tortellini hires editor to make interesting videos. More at 11. Now our main story. Tornalini has sacrificed his Saturday to update all 166 Dota 2 guides for patch 7.34. We're told that over 1,011 changes have been made, approximately over 376 words or 28 pages in total. Yeah, that's the maximum distance I'll go for that skit. Let's dive into the most important changes of this recent update. So as always, if you know and love my guide, support me by subscribing to my YouTube channels and like and share my content so, you know, the algorithm can confuse your unconditional love with the idea that people like this stuff. Easy, right? Regarding major changes, let's talk about the 11 that are at the top. I don't think your attention span can handle any more than this. So I'll let my editor massage your brain with sweet transitions and let's dive in. So the first Beastmaster guide has been retitled to Zoo, as you can see up here. And what's more important is I changed the skill build to max out Call the Wild Boar and Earner Beast because you just don't have the mana to pull off wild axes all the time. What's really important here is with the new Ag Shard for the hero uh, revolving around the Hawk landing on top of your opponent uh, it makes it more of a priority than, than before, especially now with the Helm of the Overlord build or even the Ag Scepter build, which we'll talk about later on. I've also streamlined his situational, uh, which you can see here, and his extension items, as well as his luxury items at the bottom here, to be more aligned with what we're seeing kind of at the pro immortal level pub games. So Bristleback has been kind of dormant for a while. Um, the latest changes for him in 7.34 are really cool, but in my personal opinion, it's not really enough. Uh, with that said, I did revisit his entire reitemization because before it was more about him physically attacking with the 18 worth pass damage per stack. Uh, now it's more about the spell life still at 25, um, Goo's not picked up till 8, um, Ag Scepter now plays well with Bloodstone Arcane Boots, so you can disassemble the Vanguard, you can disassemble Arcane Boots, make your Bloodstone, get that sweet mana regen that you love, throw in the Aghanim Scepter for um, that new ability that you really like, as well as you know even considering Ag Shard, which uh, plays really well with this whole combination of Bristleback being kind of an offensive bristle back quill spray kind of hero all right y'all you're gonna have to help me out here a little bit with invoker um i did a once over real quick because he's now a universal attribute hero he's obviously a very fluid hero more fluid than morphling actual liquid form and requires pretty much a lot of attention i think it's mostly accurate you know we pick up the urn of uh, shadows and spirit vessel because one it's now universal attributes uh, value, right? You get two crowns by building a spirit vessel. And then two, Invoker's Universal Attribute Hero. Ganks a lot, does great damage, great initiator. So really appealing for him to get the Earn of Shadows. Hand the Minus, a natural pickup for the hero because he's got great damage. And now he has great uh, spell effects as well. Uh, his skill build has been switched up, right? Before it used to be Quas Exhort or Wex Exhort. Now it's, um, excuse me, Quas Wex. Um, with Exhort coming out last, we also adjusted um, a bit of his talents. On 20, you can be either Alacrity Damage or Chaos Meteors, up to you. Um, really, you know, dependent on your style and more importantly, if you're being more offensive with the right click or uh, you think Chaos Meteors with the massive uh, value in terms of damage and AoE is more appealing. Uh, big stuff to talk about for Lone Druid. Lone Druid also now Universal Attribute Hero, but now his bear is also Universal Attribute Hero, and so it was kind of up in the air on how to interpret this hero. Uh, that said, I think I've got a good grasp on him. I'm going to take a look at him after this video, so please check back in-game to see if he's changed again, which he likely has. Uh, that said, there is kind of three big items to consider when building this hero. Um, there's the natural Diffusal Blade into Mask of Madness build, or Mask of Madness into Diffusal Blade. Um, I've also seen some harpoon pickups uh, for the hero, which are kind of the big three that I'm, I'm uh, deeply considering. Um, also, if Desolate is still the way to go, which obviously helps with Lone Dread's pushing power, he still has great pushing power on top of all the stats items. Uh, and then what's really key to understand for this hero is these iron branches. There's like, what, nine iron branches here? Ten? Yeah, nine iron branches. What you have to understand with um, the bear and Lone Druid being universal attribute heroes is the fact that these iron branches need to be kind of economically maximized. So you're going to pick up four for Lone Druid, you're going to pick up five plus Quelling Blade for the bear, which should be within your starting items gold amount. And then as you pick up more items for the bear, like, you know, Orb of Corrosion, like Phase Boots, like Diffusal Blade, like Mask of Madness, you're going to bring these iron branches over to your uh, Lone Druid, and your bear is going to just keep going with whatever iron branches he has to maximize the stat output plus damage and then your lone druid 
will pick up any leftover iron branches over time until he himself gets new items. All right, guys, if you've been on YouTube for any amount of time uh, regarding Dota 2, you've been noticing a lot of new talk about the new position five, Nature's Prophet. If you are already tired of seeing Nature's Prophet being in the pause three, just doing nothing but farming, you're gonna love this pause five because, or even pause four, because all this Nature's Prophet does is gank. Uh, now with teleportation giving great stacks when you uh, gank, meaning you get armor and you get damage per stack, means he can jump onto any foe and completely take him out or finish them off with a three-man gank, uh, if you're attacking, let's say, a safe lane. And on the split side, Sprout also now does damage if you can trap someone or even keep someone around the Sprout. So you can even be on the outside, and that also plays well into a ganking Nature's Prophet. So we now built the hero in line with that um, play style, well, so to speak. So Medallion of Courage is going to come up first. We're going to look at Solar Crest, which obviously plays well into both the uh, teleportation damage per stack plus ganking. You can either buff the carry or mid laner, or you can even decrease the armor on enemies to do more damage with your right click. Lastly, we'll do Aghanim Scepter. Aghanim Scepter not only gives you great stats for the hero, uh, but on top of that, Nature's Prophet, if you used to play the hero, he used to go Octarine into, uh, he used to go Ag Ag Scepter, excuse me, into Octarine Core, and then that would just entrap foes for like the longest time, and it would be pretty nasty. So, uh, Razor might be back. Yeah, another interesting hero change uh, that might give this hero some real oomph. Uh, I think it, he's still kind of an offlaner. I've seen people play him as a pause one. Uh, that's mostly revol revolving around the idea that his Storm Surge now has some pretty good farmability. Um, yes, you know, every time you're attacked with Storm Surge now, you do a little bit of Chain Lightning of damage, which helps you great against massive stacks and camps. Um, I personally think it plays well into Ancient stacks, as well as Storm Surge giving you uh, movement speed to be able to static link onto opponents. And so the skill build is also kind of in flux, depending how you play or depending what you think should be prioritized. If you're thinking of, I'm gonna be attacking my opponents real hard and fast, and I don't really care about getting stacks as much or farming as fast as I can with those stacks, then you're gonna max out Plasma Field and Static Link. If you think, you know, even though I'm off lane or even pause one, I still need to be able to farm and carry and I can do pretty good damage with just Plasma Field and Eye of the Storm with one, one level and Static Link because I have a great uh, position support or pause two, then you are going to max out Plasma Field Storm Surge and your item build is also going to look very similar, right? You're going to go double Wraith Band for the stats as well as right click. You're going to go uh, Power Treads, you're going to go Yasha, Manta Style or Sanji Yasha and then BKB. And then I would recommend as your last item, either Blink, uh, Butterfly is always popular, uh, Refresher Orb. These are very good uh, items to consider. Venomanta returns to his old ways. He's now pause three. He could be still a support. I think he's actually a very good support, but uh, I've opted for what is meta, and meta is Venomanta is pause three. Uh, that means the hero has great right click, universal attribute hero, loves spirit vessel, so heads up on that, spirit vessel. Gonna pick up a power treads instead of tranquil. Sometimes you were unsure about it back in the old days before Venomanta was a pause five. And then four staff or even a uh, pipe of insight if you want to consider uh, more team related items or positioning items. The hero is very flexible. You could be pretty much everything that you would want in a team. Um, has a natural allegiance to spirit vessel as I talked about. And everything else has stayed the same, right? You're still gonna max out poison sting first. You're gonna get plague ward second. Um, this is pretty for mana issues or mana, mana challenges that you have. So definitely easy hero to understand if you've already been playing him. If not, I would recommend him. He's probably gonna be a very popular hero in the near future. So that's pretty much it. Thank God you could check in game for all the guides being updated. Uh, please note starting September, I'll be in Japan for a long overdue vacation, but we'll monitor the new builds and changes on my laptop, probably on my 16 hour flight. So let me know in the comments which heroes you're trying out or if there's a build you think I need to improve. Um, see you in game and uh, thank you so much for checking out my video.